from Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2017. Brought to you by Docker and support from its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE. I'm Stu Miniman here with Jim Kobielis. Happy to welcome back to the program someone we've had on the, on, on the Cube many times, Ben Golub, who's the CEO of Docker. Welcome back and hey, congratulations to you oh, and the team. Oh, hey, thank you. No, this, is, this is, as I'd like to say, this is our favorite time of year. Yeah. Um, followed very closely by the week after DockerCon when we no longer have to. Do it. Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. mean, look, th I said the, di the, the word that stuck out for me the most this morning yeah, yeah. is scalability. Yeah. So we talk about how customers are thinking about scalability, how you scale the Absolutely. different solutions you have, and look at the scale of an event like this. So, you know, we, we've got you know, this big event here, yeah. 5,500 people as you yeah, said, yeah, yeah. which, you know, we were reminiscing back to like the first DockerCon and the growth of this. It, it, it's impressive and it's gone really well. It's, you know, yeah. I haven't seen people griping about taking an hour to check in. Uh, food's been good, good. you know, okay. lines have been. So, yeah. um, and Austin, uh, you know, always a fun place to come. And Ab absolutely. Uh, apropos for all the open source stuff that's going yeah, on. Yeah, the only problem is this is the first place uh, where we've had a Docker conference where we haven't been at a port. Yeah. So like all of these great, you know, look at the container ships outside, <laughs> you know, we can no longer do that. Yeah, well, uh, that's okay. Vancouver maybe would be good. I remember, I actually, I did puns for an entire week when we were at OpenStack Summit yeah, uh, yeah. in Vancouver, oh, uh, you right. know, overlooking the bay there, because there's container ships everywhere. That's right, uh, that's right. So, so Ben, you know, please, just bring us up to speed, yeah. kind of you, the team. There, we've gone through a lot of the announcements, sure. but you know some of the highlights for it for you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously this morning we had a lot of fantastic announcements. We talked about Linux Kit, we talked about Mobi. Um, you saw just huge improvements to the developer flow. Um, tomorrow is going to be a lot about enterprise, and for me, that's that's really the most exciting change that we've seen over the past year. Is just an explosion of Docker in the enterprise. Um, uh, you know, Docker has brought on over 400 enterprise class customers, um, some of the largest names uh, uh, really in the industry, right? And, and some of them like MetLife and Visa and Intuit will be talking uh, live tomorrow. Um, and what's been especially interesting for us is that their usage of Docker is not just for greenfield projects. Um, you know, Docker's being used to keep planes in the air, keep trains running on time, uh, being used at the largest, uh, some of the largest financial transactions, um, handling you know millions or billions of transactions a day, right? And that's that's really exciting for us. It's also very humbling. Yeah, I, it, it, all those use cases throw out. It's uh, Docker covers lots of applications from a wide variety of things. Right, right. It and, and reminds, and a lot of them are seen. you know they're yeah. 15, 30 year old applications as well as uh, you know two minute old applications. Yeah, uh, it, and it's, it's something we've been picking at is how much is it the new stuff and how much is it. Uh, the platform that can bring some of the older stuff in, yeah. and then we yeah. look at how we change it over time. And that's, I think, something we've been struggling with, kind of whole cloud and app, you know, modernization yeah. for years now. Yeah, well, I think it's really good because I think I think um, there's sort of there's this fallacy that uh, sort of persisted for a while where people thought, okay, you know, you're going to have bimodal IT. There's going to be the cool new stuff done in containers run in the cloud, and then all of that old stuff that's just going to wither and die in some dark data center somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. it doesn't match what we hear. <laughs> that's absolutely not the case. Actually, you know, uh, if we look across our customer base, you know, about 50% of them are beginning their Docker journey with their traditional apps. Now that's not where it ends, but you know, if you think about it, just by taking you know, 80% or 90% of the apps out there are traditional applications running on traditional infrastructure, and just by taking a traditional application, you put it inside of a Docker container, you know, automatically you're getting, without changing a single line of code, something between 75% and 5x better resource utilization. You're able to do simple things like upgrade your database or move from an old machine to a new machine or an old data center to a new data center. Again, without changing a single line of code. Yeah. But then the magic starts, right? Then you start taking that traditional application and treating it in a more modern way. CI, CD, gradually breaking it down into smaller and smaller bits, and that's yeah. so, you know, where the so, goes. You know, some of us have struggled. We said, you know, remember back virtualization. Virtualization has the easy, low-hanging fruit of, oh, I can consolidate, I can yeah. get rid of utilization, I could save a lot of money. Um, I think you did a good job laying out, you know, yeah. in your last statement there, but it, it's not as simple. You know, when it gets bubbled up to the customers, you know, the board, the C-level, when they're doing this, what is it they're like, what's the initiative they're running? Because it's not, you know, nobody says, oh, I have a container problem, um, right, or right, I need right. to fix it. What is that, you know, business need, you know, that, that, that you're helping to you know, help them sit at itch? Well, at some level, they need, to, they need to be more efficient, they need to be faster, right? Yeah. And Docker helps you do that if you're running brand yeah. spanking new applications. Kind of that agility that we've yeah. been talking about. It's agility, cloud. but you know what? 
part of agility is also making sure that your existing applications don't weigh you down, right? And and that they actually support your business strategy going forward. Yeah, and, and I mean, one, one of the things I, I the, one of the things that excited me about containers in the early days is I'm an infrastructure guy, yeah. and infrastructure's always held us back. Yeah. And the atomic, you know, yeah, exactly. The, yeah. You know, containers bring the application really as the atomic node. It's not the server or the right. VM. It's the app or you know the you know twelve factor you know sure, sure. you know app there. So it's it's the apps driving it, not in infrastructure matters, but it's not the thing driving it. Right. Well, I mean, you know, the by you know by focusing on the app, we actually let people choose the infrastructure that they want or migrate from uh, you know one style of infrastructure to another style over time. Uh, what it also though means is if you're focusing on the app or on the container, then how you think about security and how you think about networking and how you think about uh, compliance, uh, you know, all of those things need a refresh, but the good news is once you do that refresh, it's actually much faster, much more efficient. All right, so you know John Furrier wouldn't let this interview come without you know, yeah. pop popping in, so, so he's just sending me a note. He says, then, what is the intersection between the cloud native and the app developers that you're seeing? Uh, the inter intersection between the cl cloud native... Cloud uh, native and app developers. Um, you know, I think that developers want to build cool stuff. Yeah. And if they build it cloud native, that's fantastic. Um, if they want to build it not being cloud native, that's very cool too, right? And we're seeing this whole generation of, of, of developers who you know, may have been working in Java for the past 15 years or, or working in uh, .NET, um, and they're able to be do really, really cool things uh, with, with Docker, uh, and it actually helps bring them into the cloud native space. Yeah. But you don't have to rewrite an amazing application just because your architecture, your infrastructure is changing. Yeah, you can wrap and refactor yeah. and migrate your existing applications at the pace that you wish, uh, right. rather than being forcibly upgraded or migrated. That, that, that's right, that's right. And, and you also don't need to know what cloud you're going to be running on four years yeah. from now, or, or what infrastructure you're going to be running on, or what your app's going to be able to do, right? Um, you know, this stuff happens organically with Docker, uh, and that's really part of the beauty of it. Because you know you're developing for the multi-cloud, in other words, the clouds you're on today and the clouds you might be on tomorrow and a, and a, you know, yeah. a flexible or a graceful transition. And, you know, it's really cloud churn over time. You're going to be on yeah. a variety of clouds and you just want to make sure your applications and your data and all your assets yeah. are easily migratable. Yeah, I, I think, you, I think you, you stated that really well. And, and I think especially as people start looking into you know, applications where they want to burst or applications that are sort of big data where they want to you know, be moving the application to the data rather than the data to the applications, right? Um, that needs to be multi-cloud because actually, yeah, multi-location, right? Um, and we're happy to help that. Yeah. yeah. So we've watched the maturity of the technology, the the growth of the ecosystem. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of us were really happy. Ecosystem. I mean, you know, Solomon did a great job of yeah. highlighting that. To be honest, you know, some of the swarm stuff with Docker Data Center last year felt like it felt it, like it, we're fighting. It, yeah. It felt a little bit of fighting, and it feels like we're healing, we're coming together, yeah. and we're growing that. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe speak on that a little bit, but the follow-up question I have for you on, on kind of the business is, sure. I think we're still pretty early in the monetization yeah. strategy for this, and I think it's good for people to realize that, that you know, all of this stuff doesn't happen overnight. It's amazing to see how far it's come in, in, yeah. in you know, just four years of a company, um, but you know, I'll, I'll let you riff on those two things. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so, so I'll start with the first one, which is, um, you know, fighting within the ecosystem. You know, there, there's sort of this, this saying that, yeah. you know, people hate uh, people of a slightly different sect more than they hate pagans, right? <laughs> and so I think sometimes within within like the open source community, it's like, oh, you take a slightly different approach towards orchestration than I would have taken. Therefore, we should be enemies. And then at some right. point, you step back and say, no, wait a minute, we're we're all trying to yeah. do the same thing: build great apps and make the world uh, enable people to build great things, right? And yeah. and as I think Solomon laid out today, right, um, orchestration. Uh, container runtime, security, networking, various flavors of security. Right, these are all things that actually should be really atomic, and we should be able to collaborate on them. Um, and so you're seeing a lot more of that. Because um, also, what we're seeing is in terms of monetization. You know, monetization isn't a single, isn't driven by a single factor. It's not driven by by orchestration, or it's not driven by networking. It's really what we're seeing more and more is that it's being driven by the supply chain, and it's how do I, as an enterprise with lots of developers building lots of different types of apps. Some are old, some are new, some are Linux, some are Windows, some are running on-prem, some are running in the cloud. How do I manage that supply chain and have it be secure no matter where it's going? And that's where we're able to add a lot of value. And what we're finding as a business, to get to your, yeah. to your point, is that we'll meet the customer wherever they want to start. Our business model is a subscription model. We charge based off of 
you know, nodes per year or nodes per minute if you really want to go there. Um, and we just let them gradually start using more and more and more. And so we're actually very excited. Not only do we have you know, 400 large customers and uh, you know, 10,000 smaller customers, um, but we're seeing that every customer uh, is expanding, is renewing, and so customers who were on 40 nodes six months ago are now on 400, 500, 1,000 nodes. We have uh, one 12,000 node customer, um, and that's really good for our business model. Yeah, uh, the other question from Furrier is, you know, what KPIs are you tracking this year? You talk 400 enterprise customers, you look at the you know, size of how many employees you have. You know, what are yeah, some of the yeah. growth drivers and levers that you guys are playing with this year? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's honestly for us, the, the most important metrics that we're looking at is, is you know, obviously, you know, num number of uh, new users, how that's translating to number of new customers, um, and within the customers, you know, how many nodes are they deploying on, uh, and but most importantly, how many of more of them? Per host is that growing too? That's growing too, right? Yeah. Right. Um, so density of containers per host is growing, um, and for us, though, like the KPI is okay. You know, how are those customers doing? Uh, how are they? How many of them are renewing? How many of them are expanding? Um, and for us, you know, I think that that sort of brings it back to the customer level. We do a good job with the customers, especially the subscription business model. Right. That sort of forces you to, to and if you invest in the customer, then they're going to invest in you. Yeah. Um, speaking of money, uh, we've got Cherry Chen coming on next, and Fer, you're saying there's there's a lot of top VCs here. Yeah. Uh, what do you see that? What's driving investment in this area? Um, you know, wh wh where are you guys with dollars? Anything you can say on that? Um, okay. you know, just just kind of the, yeah, the, the so VC Fer, investment. If he wants to ask difficult questions, yeah. he's got to be sitting here. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, no. I mean, so so we're we're seeing. John yeah. is shy. He can only talk through intermediaries. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. John is not shy. Talk to yourself, John. Um, yeah. uh, you know, we're very happy about what's what's happening with our uh, monetization, which we're seeing the the uh, the top line growing much much faster than uh, than the expense line growing. Uh, obviously, we want them to cross right at a certain point, but um, it looks like that's going to happen pretty soon here. Um, but I think there's so much interest in this area because this really. This really is much broader than a single application, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, you can go out and you can invest in some great SaaS companies or some great, you know, open source application companies, but you know, containerization and Dockerization, right? It's it's really a sea change, and it's impacting infrastructure, it's yeah. impacting, impacting apps, it's impacting networking and storage and all sort of the traditional areas. But I think in a really exciting way. Yeah, then can you speak to the culture of Docker, and I remember that, that first show in 2014, you had yeah. 42 employees. Yeah. And, and now you've got a little over 300. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, what, what is, you know, the, the, the prototypical, what do you look for in, 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 a, in a Docker uh, yeah. employee there? Uh, you know, what, 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 do you, what do you see this company being you know, when you're a thousand employees? <laughs> That's a really good question. How right? do you motivate them? What is the, uh, like the vision that they're, they're all... Well, something like this I mean, is incredibly motivating. Yeah. And, and honestly, um, uh, for people at, at Docker, I mean, we look for, for all different types, you know, I sort of, uh, sort of say, hey, we kind of like people who are type A personalities and type B bodies, you know, <laughs> people who, who are really excited but are able to, you know, yeah, run, a, run at sprint pace for a marathon. Um, but honestly, uh, the things that keep us really, really motivated is, is uh, I always say like, if you're ever feeling down at Docker, go talk to users, go talk to customers, and that will get you excited. Yeah. You know, I spoke this morning about um, uh, TGen, which is the, this, uh, this uh, non-profit genomics company, yeah. and the fact that Docker has enabled them to sequence uh, individual patients' genomes mm -hmm. so much faster and diagnose them and cure them faster, and that, you know, you heard this, the story of the, of, the, of the young girl who spent you know, the first 12 years of her life in a wheelchair, barely able to talk, and now, because of things that Docker helped enable, She's out, uh, she's living life like a typical teenager, you know, wants to become a genomic scientist when she grows up, going to mainstream school. I mean, that, that, that's motivating. Yeah. And, and that helps deal with the, uh, the normal trough of, okay, the, the code didn't work, we missed the ship date, whatever the case yeah, may be. Yeah, you, you didn't help advertising clicks, you, you know, you're helping to improve yeah, lives. Yeah, no, it, 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 it and, is. And do that, and you know, I love at the show here, you've got some charitable events uh, that you're yeah, contributing yeah. to. Yeah. Um, it, it's, are there activities you guys are doing at corporate to help drive kind of civic engagement? Um, you know, we we do, but what we found is is the best is when it comes from from uh, you know from inside our, our employee base. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, our employee base they really love nothing more than going out and talking to users. And to some extent, uh, so you know, we do have a lot of uh, charitable things we do. It's really exciting to have you know, 14 and 13 year olds who are using your technology. Yeah. I mean, whoever thought? I spent my entire life. Trying to to 
have something that my kids would think is cool, and actually now they, <laughs> yeah. they think Docker is. Right? How, how, does, how does it tie in with the, the education? Are you guys helping to, you know, the, the next generation of app dev? Ab uh, you know, ab people? Absolutely, well, so, you know, you know, Docker is actually being used very broadly in uh, computer science courses just because, you know, that, that's basically how uh, teachers want students to submit their uh, submit their projects, right? They submit it in a yeah. Docker container, right? And of course, we're, we're thrilled that they're learning how to use Docker. Um, uh, it also means that the student, they don't need to worry about making sure the students' uh, laptops are set up correctly, they can focus on writing great code. Right. Um, but yes, yeah, so we, we engage in, uh, in education, we're doing some uh, educational work with uh, people in San Francisco, just because that's our that's our that's our home base, um, and we're really happy to support you know three actually four wonderful charities that are here at DockerCon today. You know that uh, some servicing uh, uh, LGBT youth. We've got uh, one in the genomic space, uh, one focused on on teaching coding, um, and that that just kind of that that really helps stay motivated. Stay right. motivated. Ben, ben, it's a shame you're not having any fun. You know, I'm having a ton of fun. Yeah. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'll probably collapse in a corner, uh, you know, come and, Friday. As but you said, your second favorite week of the year is next week, <laughs> Absolutely, <right? laughs> absolutely. All right, Ben, want to give you the, you the final word. As, you know, we've got another day. I'm sure you've got a ton of stuff in the announcement tomorrow. We're going to have Solomon on right after the keynote tomorrow. But when people leave, leave Austin, what do you want them to know about, you know, the Docker community and Docker the company? You know, I, I'd say that, you know, Docker is here, Docker is now, Docker is for old and for new for on-premise and for cloud, for Linux and for Windows, it, Docker is here for you, and however you want to use us, we're going to help you do amazing things faster. All right, I think that's a wonderful cube gem to end us on. Ben Golub, CEO of Docker, always a pleasure to talk with you. Congratulations on the show. Uh, we are thrilled to be able to be here to cover it. Great. And we'll be back with one more guest here on our day one of two days of live coverage. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>